The overall project will have a phased approach so that we're going to renovate an existing space that was previously set up as an ICU. We're gonna fit that up as an emergency department. And while we're doing that work, we're also doing site work to prep for the exterior addition and improvements. And then that'll be about a four month phase of work. Early January, we're going to physically move the department from the existing ED into what we're calling ED West, which is the temporary space. That move will take part over about three days. We'll have some advanced equipment moves, whatever we can move ahead of time uh, for the two days prior to move day. And then move day itself will likely occur early morning. So a lot of pre-thought and preparation and planning has gone into it. We've actually hired a transition planner just for um, this task. Eric Shebley, he's a consultant that we have. Um, he's really talked through this with us. We've been planning this for a lot of months already. I feel very confident that the facilities and biomedical departments will move everything ahead of time that needs to be moved. We'll do it in the early morning hours when there's very few patients in our department. In the big scheme of things, um, that specific transition will likely happen in an hour or less, if you can believe it. <laughs> it's obviously a very careful and critical operation because you're moving patients who are, um, you know, if you're in the emergency department, it's probably not because you're having a good day. Assuming that um, everything's uh, normal operating con conditions for the emergency department, which I'm not sure there's ever a normal, but the goal is to do it when there's um, low patient volumes and, uh, and we will have the space ready and we'll set a time and patients will start to be uh, transferred over. Once they're moved out, the contractor can come into the existing ED and begin renovations. And that's probably a plus or minus eight month process. So if you're a patient who's coming in with a minor injury or abdominal pain, um, you'll be dropped off by your ride. You'll park essentially where you did before. The space is right in front of the ED. Um, won't be available because they're gonna be in the project area, but just across uh, the, the drive section of the, uh, of the hard surface, those existing ED spaces um, will be preserved. We have staff shifting um, north ever so slightly. So the number of spaces and the general location is the same. Patients will be arriving at the back door of the old ICU, now ED West. They'll be greeted by registration staff. They'll be sent to triage, and once they're triaged, they'll be referred to one of two different waiting rooms. If you arrive by ambulance, of course the ambulances will know there's a very tight back-in spot for the ambulances, um, but they're all trained on how to do that adequately. If you are somebody who is having chest pain or having an emergency and your family drops you off, there will be a greeter at the same place. They'll call the nurse. The nurse will come over and meet you, greet you, bring you into the emergency department and skip your walkway into registration. Hopefully, patients don't notice that much of a difference. They can still count on the same excellent care they've always had. In the end, uh, it will be excellent care in an even more excellent space. Um, during the transition, it will be excellent care. In a, in a slightly smaller space. It's always a little bit tricky to make a move uh, like this. The emergency department is excited. Mm -hmm.